Stan Gibalisco here with a little explanation of how we define the cycle in an alternating current wave. What constitutes one complete cycle? You may have heard the term cycles per second or hertz or we may uh, you may have heard the term this uh, phenomenon occurs for several cycles of the wave. Well, what exactly is a cycle? What you're looking at is the Amazon page for Electricity Demystified 2nd Edition, published on January 10th, 2012, available simply by going to that page, a link to which I will provide in the description of this video. But what I'd like to do now is show you two ways from that book that are illustrated uh, in chapter 6 as to how we define the cycle of a wave. The cycle of a wave basically, such as this one, is the, the time between or the set of events between a point on a, the wave and the same point on the next iteration of the same wave. For example, successive wave crests or positive peaks, the time or the set of events between these two points constitutes one cycle. The same thing can be said for the negative peaks or troughs. Uh, the distance or the time between them, or the set of events between them, constitutes one cycle. But the more common method of doing it is to define successive going positive points where the wave crosses the zero voltage axis going positively from that point to the next point where it does the same thing constitutes one cycle of the wave. Now I am showing sine waves here because they're very simple. Uh, but there are, of course, other types of waves, and we're talking only about alternating current waves. If there is a direct current component on this wave so great that it displaces the whole wave up so it's not alternating current anymore, then we can't really say it ever crosses the zero point, in which case we have to revert to this definition or this definition. But that's how it works. And again, I will provide a link to the book in which you will find this and a great deal more similar information and dissimilar information about electricity uh, right here at Amazon.com. You can also get it, of course, at Barnes & Noble. Or if you're lucky enough to find a bricks-and-mortar bookstore in your area, uh, you might actually find this book there. And you might also be able to go to the library and, and find it. Uh, in which case you don't have to buy it. <laughs> Isn't that what libraries are for? To save uh, people money. But there's no way that you're going to save yourself if you get too close to this exploding star somewhere in a galaxy without a name, in a set of galaxies without a name, in a universe without a name, in a set of universes without a name, in a thought empire without a name. You give it a name. I'm too lazy. Stan Jibalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.